we can try to edit a genome by using a DNA break at a target locus in the genome and then trying to modify the sequence at that point or editing it or inserting it or I mean inserting the gene of interest that we want and this process can happen through multiple technologies and we will discuss three in this particular video the DNA repair pathways that we know in eukaryota are the non-homologous end joining uh, ones which include a double stranded break and a homologous recombination one where we have a single or a double stranded break to begin with let's discuss the zinc finger nuclease so zfns are fusions of two main domains the dna binding domain and the dna cleavage domain the DNA binding domain consists of different zinc finger proteins. These are transcription factors and the DNA cleavage domain, which is an endonuclease of bacteria. Uh, it is called the FOC1 uh, endonuclease. And this is the region where the forward and the reverse ZFN um, cleavage domains bind together and dimerize and help to cleave off at that po point. Each domain of a zinc finger is able to re uh, recognize three base pairs of the DNA sequence. This is in sharp contrast to talin. Talin is a transcription activator like effector nucleus, which is also composed of a DNA binding domain and a DNA cleavage domain. However, here the DNA uh, binding domain is going to recognize every DNA seco every DNA nucleotide individually. So it is composed of highly conserved repeats. These are 34 amino acids. With the exception of an amino acid at the 12th and 13th position, these two locations are highly variable and they correlate with a specific nucleotide that is recognized. The DNA cleavage domain over here is again the FOC nuclease and it is only active as a dimer. So we can easily engineer the DNA binding domain so that the talons can cleave off essentially any sequence that is of our interest. The third more popular and upcoming technique now is the CRISPR-Cas technique. Over here we have clusters of regularly spaced palindromic repeats which are arrays of about two to 600 palindromic repeats that are discovered in the genomes of around 50% bacteria and 90% of all archaea. These repeats are composed of some uh, segments called spacers and these spacer sequences match foreign genetic elements that are present in viruses or plasmids. So essentially CRISPR is an antiviral defense system for a bacteria and it involves the acquisition of a novel spacer that is the result of uh, antivirus resistance in which the spacer sequence is derived from the viral uh, sequence. This protospacer is the sequence in the foreign genetic element that is matched whenever the CRISPR complex has to cleave off the foreign DNA element. The Cas9 nucleus is able to cleave off any point that is recognized by this PAM motif. The PAM motif itself is protospacer adjacent motif which means that if there is no PAM, then there will be no cutting by the Cas9. So a CRISPR repeat never has a PAM for itself. In very simple terms, a guide RNA is able to take the nucleus or the scissors of the DNA to the exact point where we want to cleave off the DNA sequence. So this will allow us to make cut or nick at the point of our interest and insert, modify, delete, whatever we'd like at that point. Just as a comparison, the target length that is targeted by ZFN is 18 to 36. For Talon, it is between 24 to 59. And for Cas9, it is between 20 to 24. The nucleus module in ZFN and Talon is FOC1, but for Cas9, it is the Cas9 complex itself. Then the protein size required for ZFN and Talin are both small, but for Cas9 it is big. The specificity of ZFN is 
uh, a little dicey because it can have an off-target cleavage as well, which has been reported in the past. Talon is highly specific. Cas9 itself can be uh, off-target, but a little off-target cleavage for a pair of nicking uh, Cas9 variants can happen when there is a high homology that is carried in the guide RNA and some other off-target sequence. Overall, the Cas9 genome editing is faster and cheaper than the other conventional methods.